Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you this block building system where you can place some blocks inside the world. As well you have this clipping functionality so that the blocks automatically fit next to each other. So let's go! This tutorial will be very similar to my placing furniture tutorial, of course link is in the description. So we start up with these two materials for green and red. Let's open this up. Very simple. This one is a surface translucent that gets a 3D vector, just green here, as a constant with 0.6 for the opacity. The same thing for red. The first thing that we need is a blueprint actor, so right click blueprint class actor, and let's call this build underscore actor. Open this up. We add up a static mesh and let's call this mesh. Scroll down to the collision and we set the collision presets to overlap all dynamic. Next we add up a variable called can spawn as a boolean and then we open up the event graph. We just need the event begin play, take out the mesh, get the material in my case, since it's just a block, we have just one material. Then we pull this out and say promote to variable. Let's call this material. And connect it. In this way we save up the original material later for the spawn. We can close our build actor and create another blueprint class actor called clip underscore point. Open this up. This gets a um, box collision. Just this box here. Open up the details, go to the collision as well and set this time this to no collision and deactivate everything else. Compile and save this. We are done here as well. Next we create a child out of these. So build actor, right click, create child blueprint class and let's call this box. And the good part is the only thing that we have to do is set our static mesh, in this case the cube, this one here and the material of our choice. I have this one, of course, link is in the description. So it should be look like this later. Great. The next thing that we have to do is place the clip points onto the box here. So we just add up the child actor and when we open up the details, we can select our clip point. And now we can place the clip point on every side of the cube here. So I skip the process. As you can see, we have now a clip point on every side. Be sure that you place them exactly where they belong to. So we can close this one and open up our build actor again. We need a function called check spawn. The first thing that we need is get overlapping actors. Then we get the length. We check if it's greater than zero with a branch. Then we go from the overlapping actors and say for each loop with break and connect it to true. From the array elements we cast to our clip points From the clip points we get the actor location. Then we want to set the actor location of self, in this case our build actor, like this. Then we take out our mesh and want to set the material, in this case to our red material here. So we select it and place it right here. Same thing down here for the green material. So select the green material, put it right here. On cast failed, we go to the red material. On the set actor location, we go to the green material. On faults of the branch, we go as well to the green material. And at the end, we want to set the can spawn up here, of course, to faults and down here to true. So it checks if it's overlapping with something, 
if it overlaps with something, we check if it's a clip point. Then we want to set it to the clip point and make this possible to spawn. That's why it's true. If it's not a clip point, it's not possible to spawn because something's in our way. Same thing if it's nothing in our way, even not a clip point, we want to spawn it. Compile and save this. The next function is the place function. We take out our can spawn again, check with the branch if we can spawn it. Then we take out our mesh here. As well, we take out the material. From the mesh, we want to set the material on true back to our original material. From the mesh, we set the collision profile name to block all dynamic. Then we want to get all child actors, in this case our clip points. We go from the array here and say for each loop, connected, we cast to our clip points. From the clip point we get the box, this one here and want to set the collision profile name as well to overlap all dynamic. Be sure that you spelled it right, very important. Compile and save this. So this is our place function. We are nearly done. The last part is we have to integrate this functionality in our character. In my case, it's a first person character but this is also working for a third person character, doesn't matter. So let's open up the standard first person character, nothing special. We need two more variables inside here. The first one will be placing as in boolean and the second one will be the spawn actor. This is of course an build actor object reference. Compile and save this. Then we need a function called try place. We start up with a branch to ask if we can place something. Then we get the, in my case, first person camera. Of course, when you have third person character, the third person camera. We get the world location as well as the get world rotation. We get the forward vector then we want to multiply this one here, right click, convert to float, 1500. So that's the radius where we can place something. Then we want to say add plus this one. And on true, we get a line trace by channel. The get word location is the start and this will be the end. We need a branch to ask if we really hit something. Then from the hit, we say break hit result. We get our spawn actor. Then we ask, is it valid with a question mark on true? If it's valid, we want to set the actor location. In this case of the spawn actor here, we pull out the location of the hit result, like this one. Then we open up the details of our try place and add an input here. This will be the actor class and we set it to our build actor class reference. We pull this out back to here and say spawn actor from class on not valid. Right click on spawn transform split structure pin and again we connect the location here. Then on false we go from the spawn actor again and say is valid with a question mark like this one. Again from the spawn actor we say destroy actor on valid. Then Again, from the spawn actor, we want to check the spawn. 
set the spawn actor to the return value of the spawn actor here. Again, want to check the spawn like that. And that's it. Compile and save this. Let's go back to our event graph here. Now we need some inputs. Let's choose the one key for example. We want to set the placing boolean to true and just call our try place function. In this case, of course, we just have the box. Later we can add up some wood box or some green box, whatever you want. We need a little delay here of 0.1 seconds. On complete, we call the try place function again. Then we have the left mouse button. We get our spawn actor here, get the can spawn boolean. For safety, we check the is valid with a question mark again on pressed. With a branch, we check if we can spawn it really. Then we call the place function that we actually place it, of course, on true. And at the end, we just set the placing boolean to false and set the spawn actor to nothing. Then we have the right mouse button. This will be the cancel button. In this case, we check again if we can place something or if you're placing something, you can say. Then we take out the spawn actor again. Want to destroy the actor on true. And the same thing, we set it to nothing for placing and the spawn actor. Great, let's see if this works. When we play, press one, we can move around the box here. When we press the left mouse button, we actually place it. When we press the right mouse button, we cancel the operation. Clipping works as well as you can see. So we can place everything like we want. Great. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know. And yeah, goodbye.